Welcome back, everyone, to Textual Criticism. This is a summary of the Textual Criticism of the Hebrew Bible. We're going to quickly go through essentially everything we've looked at thus far so that we can sort of tie it all together. You can have it in one place to briefly overview or summarize. We're going to look at the layout of Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, or BHS, look at some of the general errors that take place in transmission. Then we're going to look at the Masoretic textual tradition, the Samaritan Pentateuch, the Qumran text, the Septuagint and its recensions, and then finally the other translations. So the layout of BHS, if you remember, there's the main text in the critical edition, then the notes in the margin and underneath of the main text, the Mazora, the Koraika Thieves out in the notes, amongst other things, and then finally the critical apparatus. So let's review, take a look at it. Here is the main body of the text. Here are the Mazora, and then there underneath of the yellow is the critical apparatus. And if you remember the way that it works, here in the text, if we see that small b, it tells us to go down here to find that small b, and that tells us what the variation is. So here it says the multitude of manuscripts and the Samaritan Pentateuch have elb as opposed to l. Now the types of errors, if you recall, this isn't going to review all of them, but there are unintentional and intentional errors. So examples of unintentional errors would be mistaken letters, homophony, things that sound the same but are actually different, and dictography, doubling something in the writing. These are all unintentional mistakes. Intentional errors are those that the scribe intentionally updates things like spelling and grammar, or resolving difficulties in the text, or changing things that are considered inappropriate in the text to things that uh, are euphemisms. Now, the Masoretic textual tradition, if you remember, it was originally in consonantal form. It originated during the Second Temple period. We don't know exactly when it began, but we have evidence of it throughout the at least the second half of the Second Temple period. It became authority, authoritative to the Jewish community by the second century CE. And there were three periods of transmission, the second temple period through the Middle Ages. The Samaritan Pentateuch. In northern Israel, they considered Gerizim, not Jerusalem, their holy place. And because of that, it influenced their Pentateuch, their Torah. They only recognized the Torah as authoritative, and so that's what was transmitted. And the ideological changes that accompanied their northern beliefs were added to the text. Now, the text from Qumran. They were discovered in 1947, just south of Jericho, in the Judean desert. The text copied by the Qumran community during the 2nd and 1st centuries BCE There were over 200 biblical scrolls with almost all of the biblical texts from the Old Testament. The great Isaiah scroll comes from Qumran, and some of these texts were written in the old Paleo-Hebrew script. The Septuagint, a very important translation, it translates the Hebrew text into Greek. The Greek translation dates to the 3rd century BCE. The New Testament and the early church fathers quote from the Septuagint. And there were several later recensions which aimed at bringing the Old Greek, the original translation, uh, more in line with the developed Hebrew tradition. There were other translations which included the Aramaic Targums, the Syriac Peshitta, the simple translation, and the Latin Vulgate. So that summarizes what we've covered in Old Testament textual criticism for any of these topics. There are, uh, is at least one video, if not more. So please go back and review them if you are so inclined. Starting tomorrow, 
we're going to look at textual criticism of the New Testament and try to do essentially the same thing that we did with the Old Testament, sort of piece by piece, looking at how New Testament textual criticism is done. So please stay with us. Thanks.